Here we go. We've got quite the audience for you this afternoon. What do you know? All right, I think that's just about everyone, Tessa. Great, fab. Um, I'll just start by saying a polls um, if I'm a bit snotty, I've got a slight cold, um, which is perfect timing for this. Um, I just hope that stops doing that. Um, great. Well, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, I am Tessa Bide. I'm a theatre maker and performer based in Bristol. Um, my company is called Tessa Bide Productions. Um, I performed at an NRTF conference a few years ago with my show Arnold's Big Adventure that was in a tent um, and it had a pond in it. So if, uh, if anyone remembers a tent show with a pond in it, that was me. Um, so today I'm talking about um, a show called The Anarchist Mobile Library. Um, uh, do I have to keep admitting people or, or will somebody else do that? I'll do that for you. All good. Great. Um, so uh, two and a half years ago, I won a um, 1970s pop-up caravan. I'd applied to a call out um, for theatre makers to make a show in it. And a year and a half later, we had created that show. Um, it's called the Anarchist Mobile Library and it stemmed from the feeling that you get when you go inside a caravan like that. Um, you feel massive. So I wanted to capitalise on that feeling and make, a, make children feel big and powerful when they entered and throughout the show. Um, after a residency at Seven Stories, which is the National Centre for Children's Literature in the UK, um, it's based up in Newcastle in 2018, um, the Anarchist Mobile Library took shape and um, thanks to two Arts Council grants, we finished the show and st started touring it last autumn. It can tour anywhere, um, from village hall car parks to school playgrounds, village fates and festivals. Audiences of up to four people at a time enter the mobile library and can choose where they adventure to. Um, perhaps a journey into space, through the magic wardrobe, into the witch's kitchen, witching, uh, or into the deep. Um, the show is interactive at its core with the children deciding how each story ends. And at the end, they become a fully qualified anarchist librarian get a nice badge like this one, and we encourage them to carry on adventuring by exploring their local library or museums for ideas. Um, the show lasts about 15 minutes long and we can do up to 20 in a day because we're hardcore. Um, we also encourage them to look around them and see um, what stories they can see being played out in the world that they have the power to change the endings of. So basically, we wanted this show to inspire a love of reading and to start a journey of activism from a young age. Um, so my first share screen adventure here, I'm just going to show you the um, trailer for that show to give you a bit more of a visual sense of what it was. Hello, we're anarchist librarians. Have you got the password? Come on in, quick. We got a load of options of what we wanted to do. And then we went on that adventure, and then we got to make it our own. Every story starts somewhere, but where do you want to go first? It was brilliant, wasn't it? It was bonkers. <laughs> we jumped potions. Potions? And what did you turn me into? A frog a and a monkey. A frog and a monkey. We went to the deep and found some mermaids. We went to space. 
Where did we go? <laughs> to the and jungle. the jungle when we pulled the tiger's tail and it roared. I think it's great because it gives the little ones a chance for their imaginations to go wild and they can say what they like and they just know there's no wrong answers. And to see a grown-up as well who's just kind of willing to be silly and explore different possibilities, I think it's really useful for them. Some friendly aliens, let's go to them for help. <sighs> Come in, mayday, mayday. Let's go. It's given us the opportunity to be a lot more creative at home, to allow him to express himself in his own way. You can change your stories, you know, in, the, in terms of what's happening in the world at the moment. You know, play your part in what's going on. And very, very, very fun and amazing. Yeah. I stayed in there a long time, it was brilliant. And I want to go again. <laughs> very pre-COVID world as you can see in that, in that one. Um, hang on let me just pause the video. Um, so uh, this year we were due to um, tour that show to 28 theatres, festivals, rural venues and libraries when COVID hit. Weep. Um, so we had to get creative. Um, we repurposed our third arts council grant which we've been given to um, uh, subsidized the tour and we created an online interactive audio adventure um, of the show. So this can be played by anyone with access to the internet um, with a device that can play sound. So that could be a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop or a computer. Um, and if the internet strength isn't all that, then um, it can be downloaded to play offline as well. Um, so we designed it for families to play together, acting out the story um, and scavenging for props from around the house. Um, and I thought, instead of telling you about it, why don't we have a go at playing it all together? Um, so in a second, I'm going to share my screen and we'll go on some adventures. Um, feel free to uh, turn off your computer, close your eye, um, not turn off your computer, don't do that, that's really silly. Um, turn off your... your uh, camera. Um, close your eyes and um, journey into your imaginations or um, you can physically act out the adventure if you're feeling energetic, which I imagine not at the end of a long day of this. Um, so I'm going to skip the intro of the piece and get straight into um, an adventure and a little poll um, will come up on your screen if you're watching this live on Zoom and you can choose what happens, hopefully, if it all works. Um, so this is the little starty bit, and then I'll launch the poll. But where do you want to go first? Okay, these are your options. Um, so I'm going to launch uh, the first poll, um, and you can vote for where you want to go. Nice and speedy now. Twenty-seven of thirty-nine. Oh, thirty of thirty-nine voted. Thirty-one. Got eight people left. Lickety split. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just end it. Six people left. Okay. End poll. Um, share results. The magic wardrobe has clinched it by one vote. Uh, right. Let's stop that. Let's go back into this. Oh, the technology, people. Right, the magic wardrobe. Here we go. Excellent choice, trainee librarian. We are going to journey into the magic wardrobe. It's standing in front of you here. A huge mahogany wooden wardrobe with intricate carvings into the door. I can see a crown up there. And a sword down there. Are you ready to help me open it? Grab the handle there and pull. <coughs> oh, it's a bit dusty. Brrr, it's freezing. A puff of freezing cold snow escapes from inside. Ah, you've got a bit on your nose. Oh, there's some fluffy fur coats hanging up here. Don't worry, I'm sure they're fake. Here's one for you and a big orange one for me. Have you got a scarf and a hat that you can put on? Go and fetch them then. 
There's a good librarian. Let's climb inside and see what we can find. Whoa! There's no back to this wardrobe. Through the coats and jackets, there's a frozen, wintry wonderland. Doesn't it feel nice to crunch through the powdery snow? Look, it's coming to the top of your snow boots. Ah,、oh, the air smells crisp and fresh, like Christmas trees and midnight walks. You can see a large forest-covered hill in front of you. We can't go round it. We can't go over it. We're gonna have to go up it, my friend. Take these ice picks. Let's climb. The snow is falling fast. You have to dig your ice picks in really deep to not slip. Whoa! Your lips are going blue. And my eyebrows are frozen solid. We're nearly at the top. Well done! Just one last little bit. Phew! We've made it. Here we are, standing on top of the icy mountain. Oh, it's windy! Look at that view. Snow-covered forest as far as the eye can see, and lots of animal prints in the snow. Oh, look over to your right. There's a little clearing in the trees. It looks like there are some strange-looking ice statues down there. Let's go and check it out. But how are we going to get down there? Shall we strap some skis on and ski down, or fashion a zip wire? Out of this tooth floss I've got in my pocket. Okay.、Uh, yeah. Which one should we do?、Um, let's go.、Um, so if we the uh, uh, zip wire is on the right, ski is on the left. Zip wire or ski? Okay, we're going with zip wire. Sixteen、um, people went for zip wire. You crazy cats! All right, stop sharing that. Let's get out of that. Um, go back into sharing the thing. All right. I like your bravery. No one ever chooses the zip wire. Here, take this dental floss. You're good at making knots, aren't you? Just make a standard Spanish rose knot, trainee. No time to waste. Chop, chop. Right. I'll lasso this round that tree down there. Okay, that ought to do it. Right. Take off your scarf and loop it over the top. Yeah, that looks about right to me. Just like in the movies. <laughs> right, O. You first. Here we go! Whoa! This is much faster than I thought. My eyeballs are turning into ice balls. Whoa! My arms are going to fall out of their sockets. Watch out! There's a crow flying up ahead. Swerve to the side, and another one. Swerve to the other side, and a flock of turkeys. I didn't even know they could fly. Lift up your legs. You! Whoa! Nearly there. Hold on tight. Phew! Well done, trainee librarian. Ain't no mountain high enough to keep us from our adventure. Here we are in the creepy clearing. It's a perfect circle, and there are icy statues all around the side of it. If you're playing with a grown-up, they can be the ice statues. It looks like they're animals who look really sad, sadder than that, and scared, so scared. It looks like that one was dancing a kind of jig when they were suddenly frozen. Oh, what an awful sight! Something evil has happened here. It must be the work of the evil Snow Queen. 
she turns creatures into ice to prove her power. Trainee, we need to vanquish this evil. You're going to need to grab a weapon. I've got an umbrella sword. Pause me and grab something if you can. If not, take this imaginary bow and arrow. <laughs> now stay low. And if I say freeze, you must freeze like a statue. And hopefully she won't be able to tell that we're still alive. Let's creep through the clearing and see if we can find tracks to her castle. Freeze! Did you hear that? Oh no, sorry, it was my tummy rumbling. Maybe I should have had an emergency crumpet. Let's carry on. Try to not make a sound. Freeze! Get here! Get here! <gasps> it's the Snow Queen! And I think she's getting closer. Trainee, what's that by your feet? Unfreeze and have a look. Ah! <gasps> It's the Snow Queen's crown and the source of all her power. Have you got something that could be a crown? A bucket, a hat, a cardboard box? Grab it now if you like. <coughs> what amazing luck. It's time to make your decision. Will you take the crown as your own and become the new ruler of the Iceland? With power like that, you can do anything you want. You'll have all the Turkish delight you could ever want, but you will be stuck here, totally alone, with no friends to play with, and in permanent winter forever. Or do you take your weapon and destroy the crown, lifting the ice curse and returning the land to spring, melting the ice statues, but missing your chance to be ruler of the kingdom forever? Oh, and no Turkish delight. What do you do? Okay, keep crown is on the left, destroy crown is on the right. Uh, let's... Um, can I relaunch that? Yeah. Um, so the right is destroy it, left is keep it. Right is destroy it, left is keep it. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. You're all being very good. <clears throat> We've gone for destroy it. Okay, let's go back into this. Take your weapon and destroy that crown, trainee. Hmm, this crown is hard to destroy. Try stamping on it. Nothing. Roar at it. Something must break it up. Scrunch it up into a tiny ball. Mm, stick it under your jumper. <gasps> Hang on. That seems to be working. The heat from your body is warming the crown and it's melting into a puddle of evil goo! Wow! Look at the snow melting! And the ice statues are coming to life! They are so happy to be free! Maybe you'll never be a ruler of your own kingdom, but you saved a lot of people. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! The animals are coming out of hibernation and everyone is so happy. Let's party all the way back to the library, trainee. We've got adventures to go on. There we go. Oh, start the video again. Um, so, uh, 
I hope that gave you a bit of a sense. Um, so if we'd gone on to play three games, we would have become fully qualified anarchist librarians. Um, and with that comes the um, password to go to our um, top secret online HQ, um, which I'll show you a little snippet of here. Um, so children can play games, uh, vote for their favorite adventure, upload pictures of them playing and receive their very own badge in the post. Um, we wanted to increase the legacy of the project and give audiences something they can return to time and time again. Some cuties who have sent some pictures in. Um, we also made um, a really lovely education pack that you can see here to support libraries and schools to extend the game into a fully educational project um, and to link it into the curriculum um, with a primary school teacher helped us do that. Um, Fab. So um, we've recently uh, received a £4,000 commission from the Library Presents um, to create a BSL version of this online game um, and we're releasing that at the end of November for deaf and hard of hearing audiences and we're talking to Welsh venues and commissioners about creating a Welsh version too. Um, so, so far, this audio um, show has toured to Stamford and Guildhall Art Centres, Arts Reach, Rural Touring Scheme, um, Holla at you, Kerry and Yvonne if you're here, um, Noel Westfest and The Pound, and we have bookings at Brighton Dome, Cambridge Junction, Span Arts and Greenwich Theatre coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, and in 2021, we hope to roll it out to libraries, theatres and rural touring schemes, um, and we've had some... Uh, Thanks, Kerry. Um, had some really lovely um, feedback so far, of which I'll just show you a couple of quotes. Um, so, uh, yeah, the reading level was ideal for my six year old, and my four year old was able to join in with acting out the stories. My son was re very engaged, he was fetching props to join in and found it really fun. It also got him to use his imagination, which was great. He wanted to keep playing over and over again. I liked the animations and thought it was creative and really engaging. Thank you. It was lovely to see them acting out the stories as their drama club has not reopened since lockdown and they miss it. They loved it. Nice change from TV and computer games. Um, let's get that one off. So, um, but our journey with the show doesn't stop there. Um, in August, we were awarded the NRTF um, Unlocked Commission to trial another version of the project. Um, so this is what we've been doing in the last week with our um, partner rural touring scheme at The Pound um, and Calm Wordfest as well. Um, the project started with us sending um, these postcards. Share screen again. Here we go. Um, hang on, it will get there. Um, sending some postcards out to the residents of Calm. Um, there we go. Um, with this on the front. Um, they were printed out and left in shops and cafes um, and we asked locals to finish the sentence off um, once upon a time in Calm. And then they brought their postcards to the local park on Saturday where the Anarchist Mobile Library was waiting. Um, and as you can see from these photos by Rob Auckland, um, on Saturday we parked up and greeted locals with the intro from the original show. And then we brought them over to the mobile library and played improvised story games with their suggestions. Um, first, we told kind of one word each stories with um, about a subject of their choosing. So one performer would kind of say once, the other one would say upon a time there was like that. Um, and then we, we told, um, played a game where um, the audience would fill in a gap. So we'd say um, last Tuesday I was walking down the street um, in Cannes and there in front of me was a massive big purple and then they would kind of fill in the gap. Um, these games were silly and fun, but they also served to gradually build up the audience's confidence so that then they would be primed to share their postcard with us, or if they hadn't filled one out yet, um, to write their own story, like you can see with these kids here. Um, so we managed to do this all within current um, COVID restrictions, and we engaged with about 80 people um, from age 1 to 78, and um, we, entered, we ended the day with 42 postcards. Um, and then, as you can see here, on Sunday, um, we collated them all together into one big, slightly bonkers, um, super story um, that on yesterday, um, an illustrator called Camille um, Aubrey illustrated into this kind of uh, mini book here, or zine. Um, uh, you can see the full thing on our social media um, and the, the, the 
um, paper one looks like this. Um, so now we're going to email the digital version to the participants um, and put, put them online. And we're also going to post these lovely um, physical versions to the um, to the participants who left addresses so that they can treasure their little snippet of calm creativity forever. Um, uh, and I just wanted to share with you a little video message um, from the organizer of Khan Wordfest. Um, her name is Ruth, um, that was filmed on the day. Um, My name's Ruth Hill. I'm chair of Wordfest Khan. And I would just like to say a brilliant big thank you to Tessa and the team for the Anarchists Mobile Library, which we had in our pop up po pocket park today, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the engagement was brilliant. We. Um, I was so, so pleased that you came to Cone for us um, and thank you for all the funding. Um, Tessa and the team managed to engage with multi-generational families, with loads of young people, even some teenagers in the corner of the park. It was absolutely fantastic to watch. So much fun, so many smiles and so much great feedback from all of the families that we work with. Thank you very much. Um... Uh, and yeah, there was just a little story that I wanted to share about um, one family who came with a little boy who um, a couple of months ago was diagnosed with dyslexia um, and his his mum emailed us afterwards to say that since his diagnosis he He's refused to open a book um, engage with any sort of literacy um, and she was beginning to despair um, and they came along on Saturday and he sat down and he wrote a postcard at the end of the um, end of his little engagement and then went home took a postcard with him and has been writing stories at home um, which is pretty darn lush um, it was a really wonderful week and one that now we're really looking forward to rolling out on tour next year um, so thank you. That was a lot to pack into this 30 minute slot. Thank you so much for bearing with and keeping up. Um, what I'd like to end on is that at the start of the year, we had one show that could tour in a really specific, very COVID unfriendly way. Um, and now we have a menu that we can offer promoters and libraries from the um, solely digital version to the caravan version and then this community story version in the middle. Um, and thanks to the NRTF and this whole mad situation this year, it's kind of forced us to think outside the box. Um, I'm proud, I'm pretty proud that we've kind of managed to stay true to our original aims, which were to encourage audiences to read and to fight for the endings that they want to see in the world in all, in all three iterations of the piece. Um, so I hope that the tour can um, continue throughout 2021 with all three versions um, and you can head over to my website which is tessabide.com to find out more. Um, we, I don't know if we've got time for questions because we were running a bit late Jess but um, I'll hand over to yeah, you. Don't, don't worry Tessa that's fantastic and actually I think you answered all the questions that I had prepped for you anyway you've covered it all. Um, if there are any more questions from audiences, we'll encourage them to share that, that with us through Attendify or to contact you directly. Um, it's a really fantastically creative um, and interactive piece, um, which is why we chose to fund it as part of the Unlocked Grants and through our Library Project Fund. Um, so we're really excited to see the feedback that comes from the rest of the tour of that, that piece. So just keep us up to date and we'll be sharing more of it with our audiences and, and, and RTF members and networks. So um, yeah, I'm gonna hand over to Steffi. Um, he's gonna say the final few words before we close. Great, thanks. Great, uh, thank you everyone. Hi, my camera and everything is on, isn't it? Yep. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we do have one final session scheduled in Attendify, and that is Maddie Godfrey's poem in honour of librarians, um, which is a lovely way to wrap up the day. Um, this evening, we also have Spot On Libraries digital commission launch at half past five, which you can join through Attendify. Um, and on Friday morning, we have our open space sessions, um, which will be about library touring. And I know that the workshop earlier was just getting into the swing of a really interesting conversation. So there is space to revisit that Friday morning at 10 a.m. 
and you just join that through Attendify too. Um, otherwise, please join us next week um, when we have lots planned for you, including a fantastic lineup of speakers from Canada, the UK's largest outdoor arts organisations and Cre Creative Scotland. Um, we'll be talking about networks and collaborations overseas and in your local communities, share ideas for future proofing and outdoor arts, managing risk and creating legacy pro projects. Pentabus will be delivering their How to Rural Tour workshop. If you haven't already and you want to register for that now, I would suggest doing so. Our workshops have been filling up very quickly and we'll also be showcasing some new commissions. And um, thank you again to everyone for joining us today and our fantastic artists, panel speakers and workshop facilitators. Um, and that's everything. Enjoy the poem.